how to clean the table. There's some key equipment that you need. I'll show you that very briefly. First of all, under cushion brush and a cloth. These are very useful indeed, especially under the top cushion. Brush with shortened hair, which is what I do. I have to manually do that with a pair of scissors. It takes a long time, very uncomfortable on the hand, but that makes a big difference. I find the brush with long hair just tends to throw dust everywhere. There are some people who use the small handheld iron on the table, uh, sorry, hoover or um, a vacuum cleaner on the table and uh, they say that works okay for them. I'm still uh, old school so I prefer the physical uh, brushes, napping block and the pièce de résistance, the iron, the chunky iron. So I'm going to show you what I use first, which is brush, how I use it. I learned to do this left-handed just because I used to do it every day. And actually at the club, I used to, when I was a teenager, I'd brush 23 tables every morning. So I couldn't do that with my right hand. I'm a right-handed player because I couldn't feel my arm for about an hour. And I only had two hours free practice for doing all those tables. So, which was quite stingy from them, actually. But... Um, if I meet the owner again, I'll tell him that. But what we do with the br brush first is, I'll show you how to do it. Plenty of pressure and having a systematic approach. Whether the cloth is, looks tidy or not, I just do four or five sweeps in batches this wide. And spend a little bit more time if there are some marks. And then you give it, give it the full beans, the full potatoes, and that gets rid of a lot of the marks, chalk marks, dust, and that gets the table ready for what I do next, which is, ah, oh, by the way, what I would do after that is the cushions. So, I just put the brush on top of the cushion do that, taking any dirt from the front face of the cushion as well. Whoops. And that just keeps the table appearing very, very tidy as well. Uh, the, you should do this in line with the nap. So the nap of the cushions, the nap of the cloth on the cushions goes toward the black cushion on the long cushions. This cushion goes toward the green pocket. And then when you come down here, you can, I would always feel each cushion before you brush it anyway, because uh, this cushion comes toward the yellow side of the table. Because some clubs sometimes do put the cloth the wrong way around on uh, the cushions. I've never seen a club put the cloth the wrong way round, or a fitter rather, put the wrong cloth, cloth the wrong way round on the table, although I have seen a club turn the cloth upside down to save money, and the members never noticed. So, just double check that your club's not doing that. If they are, give them a polite reminder that they need a new cloth. Then we use the under cushion brush, and this is so valuable to get rid of the dust, especially from under this cushion that gets brushed into the top cushion. So what I do from this side is, from black spot, do that and then the same the other way toward the other pocket. And I'll do that on all cushions. And then we've got the napping block. So this has to be pushed one way, I've drawn some arrows on this, because depending on what way the nap is on the block, means it goes much more smoothly one way or the other, either this way or that way, down the nap of the table. So what you do is plenty of pressure, and do one sweep all the way to the end. This flattens the cloth, ready for ironing. And just do that. One important thing is, 
don't follow the path of least resistance. There are some people in the clubs who do this, they brush like this, just because it's, la it's laziness, path of least resistance. But then you get um, curved sweeps on the cloth instead of straight, instead of the nap being straightened down in its natural direction toward the top cushion. And then you've got the iron. When you've done that, you'd use the iron. What I do to make sure it's hot enough is just do that. And then if I feel it's hot, uh, then uh, you put plenty of pressure, move very slowly. The other way of doing it is you could put it on a newspaper, although they don't sell many newspapers these days. And just if it burns the newspaper, leave it a couple of minutes because it's probably a bit hot. But the biggest mistake I see people make is, on this cushion here, people go like this with the iron. This again is path of least resistance, laziness, very poor technique, because then you get tram lines along the bolt cushion. And they also do the same on the top cushion. And you'll see clubs who allow their table cleaners to do that, because the clubs will have big tram lines on both end cushions. The other mistake they make is doing the moving the iron at 90 degrees to the path of travel, which means there's a big temperature differential between here and here. If it's done at an angle, the heat is spread, the heat is feathered out toward the edge of the iron, toward the corner of the iron. So always put an angle 45, 30, 45 degrees at that sort of speed, that's all you need. I personally don't iron that often, I find brushing and blocking enough, and ironing once a week or so, a couple of times a week, is what I'm, what I'm happy with. If I was practicing for a tournament it might be a little bit more often, depending on how many hours a day I'm putting in, but you can singe the cloth if there's too much ironing. I remember in professional qualifying in Blackpool the tables were ironed um, to within an inch of their life four times a day and three or four times a day really slowly with really hot irons within two or three weeks these cloths were impossible to screw back on and you had horrendous contacts just as almost as if the surface of the cloth was melted and fused together that they'd been so heavily ironed. So that gives most of the to-dos and not to-dos. Finally, this silicone, non-silicone wood silk, something like that. I found this really, really useful. So, on the, not on the cloth, by the way. And also, don't iron the cushion tops uh, because there's rubber underneath. It could damage the adhesive and the structure of the rubber. So I just do that, go along each cushion. This gets rid of all the finger marks and make, makes the table appear brand new. And uh, then with the dry side of the cloth, I'll just get the excess off. Makes the room smell lovely as well. So there is just one more thing as well. That I've just remembered, I'm going to zoom up here to this pocket. If you get the camera zooming in here, look. Not only have we got three cue balls, but I just want to show you what to clean when you're cleaning the table. These pocket runners in almost every club on earth are absolutely filthy because they are never ever cleaned. But this is the quickest way to get dirt on the balls to allow the dirt to build up on these pocket runners. So with a sponge and some hot soapy water, just go across those runners on each pocket and take all the dirt off once every week or two uh, because you'll find that I think you'll be amazed at how much dirt you'll find on these pocket runners. But once they're maintained cleanly, these balls will remain cleaner for longer. You'll get better contacts and the balls will run better and you'll get less kicks and bad contacts. <laughs> So that the difference in height that I played there was probably only two millimetres or so. This is the Snooker Gym Player of the Year for 100 break players. 
you come to a stop in a controlled way and begin the delivery in a controlled way as well.